good morning Lakshman, Pramanshu, uh, Vaishnavi and uh, Yog. Uh, today we are going to start a new lesson called uh, Glimpses of India. Okay, uh, Glimpses of India. So uh, it's a very interesting lesson. Uh, there are several places which are mentioned in this lesson which uh, you know are very beautiful. Okay, so uh, we can go um, whenever the situation is favorable we can go there. Uh, good morning all of you, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, if you have got the book, uh, you can open it and uh, if you do not have the book with you, in that case, uh, you take uh, the trouble of bringing it okay, and open this uh, chapter, Glimpses of India and um, here we go. So let me begin the lesson. Uh, 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 is it uh, audible now, Sanya? Uh, is, is, uh, has the voice gone a bit uh, high? Uh, please confirm me uh, so that I can uh, start with the text. Is it okay now? Is the voice okay? If uh, the voice is okay, uh, oh my goodness, so what can be the reason? Uh, voice is low, you are saying. Why should it be low? Uh, Am I audible uh, now? Am I loud and clear, students? Am I loud and clear now? Am I audible now, dear students? Am I audible now? Can you hear me now? Has the sound improved? If the sound has improved, write yes. Okay. Laxman, am I audible properly? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, mm, let's begin uh, today's lesson. Okay. So, dear students, you see, uh, the lesson that we are going to learn today is Glimpses of India. So, in uh, this uh, lesson, we shall uh, find three different uh, information or three different, you can say, uh, like uh, places. Uh, so, one is uh, Goa, second is Kurg in uh, Karnataka. There is a place called Kurg. It's a very beautiful place, hilly place and uh, it, it, it is a tourist attraction also it's a very beautiful place and in the third part of the story we'll find about assam specific information of tea from assam okay so this is a very uh, interesting lesson because you'll come to know so many things about the unknown india okay about the unknown india so a baker from goa uh, this uh, the part of uh, the first part that is a baker from goa has been written by lucio uh, rodriguez and the second part is cool written by lokesh uh, agrol and uh, third part is tea from assam is written by arup kumar datta okay so uh, let's uh, begin now okay so you see here a baker from goa this is a pen portrait of a traditional guan village baker uh, village baker who still has an important place in his society okay so pen portrait means a description of a traditional guan village village baker okay so uh, let's find out okay uh, what is the story all about okay so this is from goa okay our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old Portuguese days. Uh, reminiscing means uh, thinking fondly about the past. Okay, thinking fondly about the past. This is what is reminiscing all about. 
Our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically, nostalgically also, uh, you know, uh, thinking about the past. Reminiscing means recollecting something about the past. So, reminiscing nostalgic, uh, nostalgically together, you can say, thinking fondly of the past. Fondly means the, some sweet memories of the past, okay? Uh, so, our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old Portuguese days. The Portuguese and their famous loaves of bread, okay? Loaves of bread. So, you must be knowing uh, Goa was the, um, you, know, um, uh, you know, colony for, of the Portuguese, okay? Uh, like the uh, like, uh, rest of India was uh, uh, ruled by the British, uh, but uh, Goa was uh, ruled by the Portuguese, okay? So, when Portuguese uh, were there in Goa, there was a tradition of, uh, you know, uh, loaves of bread, selling, eating, you know, it was a fashion. Uh, if you understand that it was very uh, favorite, okay, it was very favorite among the people, Portuguese people, and they have uh, sort of left this uh, particular habit among the, uh, you know, people of Goa, even now, okay. So, uh, those cat eaters of loaves might have vanished, okay, means the Portuguese here. But the makers are still there, okay? Eaters of loaves, my, lime, because now uh, it has come under Indian government, so, you know, it's an independent place, uh, independent, uh, you know, place in India, in, in India, but earlier it was under the Portuguese uh, people, okay? Uh, before the um, independence of India. Like, uh, you can say, um, Pondicherry was the uh, colony of the French people, okay, like Pondicherry was the colony of the French uh, people, likewise, our French, mm, you know, mm, you can say, uh, mm, uh, traders, likewise, uh, Portuguese, uh, Goa was also the colony of the Portuguese traders, okay. Those eaters of loaves might have vanished, means Portuguese people might have vanished, but the makers are still there, those who are making, uh, those who are the makers of loaves of bread. Okay, that is why a baker from Goa, okay, baker means a person who makes loaves of bread, okay. We still have amongst us the mixers, the molders and those who bake the loaves. Those age old time tested furnaces still exist. The fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished, extinguished means put out. The third and jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places, okay? So, the, uh, it is about, these are the practices uh, which were there in the past, okay? So, some of the practices of the past, of the Portuguese past, okay, uh, are still being carried out in the present time, okay? So, that is why it is said that the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished, okay? The furnaces were you know, uh, uh, loaves of bread were made. Such big, big furnaces are still there in Goa, and uh, you know, so, uh, you know, on those furnaces also uh, bread is being made. Okay, therefore, uh, the fire has not yet extinguished in those furnaces. Furnaces. The third and jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo. Okay. Uh, you know, heralding his arrival means announcing his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places. Maybe the father is not alive but son still carries on the family profession. These bakers are even today known as Pedar in Goa. Okay? The fathers may not be there but their children but their sons are carrying out this particular business of, uh, uh, you know, baker. Okay? Baking, bread baking and all that. Okay? In Goa. During our childhood in Goa, the baker used to be our friend, companion and guide. He used to come at least twice a day, once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket. The jingling third of his bamboo oak us jingling third of his bamboo, okay? Uh, because jingling third means this sound kind of sound they used to uh, carry with them so as to uh, attract the attention of the uh, buyers, okay, A extra uh, to attract the attention of the uh, people in the neighborhood where they used to go to sell their products, okay. So it was there in on the lo long bamboo, okay, where there is a kind of a um, they used to carry their, uh, you know, the bread, uh, 
baking materials and all that okay and there was a uh, bell attached to that that is why the jingling jingling third of his bamboo woke up woke us up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet him why was it so was it for the love of the loaf not at all the loaves were bought by some paskain or bestine the maid servant of the house what he longed for were those bread bangles which we chose carefully sometimes it was sweet bread of special make the baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jang jang sound of a specially made bamboo staff one hand supported the basket on his head um, and the other banged the bamboo on the ground he would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo okay uh, we kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant but we would not give up we would climb a bench or the parapet and peep into the basket somehow i can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves okay loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly okay so uh, the dear students let me tell you one thing and actually here the poet is describing uh, the you know age old traditional uh, you know um, uh, traditional way in which the uh, people of goa used to sell the bread okay as well as uh, along with bread some bangles okay uh, so the poet the writer is describing now uh, his own experience of growing up in in goa okay his own experience of growing up in uh, goa uh, so um okay so uh, here the poet the writer of this particular uh, you know part of the story the part one uh, you know uh, has grown up uh, in goa therefore he is recounting his experience with us he is his his kind of uh, you know thing okay uh, so so um, uh, you know uh, he is trying to recount okay uh, the tradition and they uh, this particular uh, you know um, you know habit of uh, making the bread and selling onto the streets uh, selling onto the neighborhood is still carried out actually so the writer is uh, you know uh, making this okay uh, he is sharing with us okay loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly okay uh, loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly and why should we we who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the tooth toothbrush and why was it necessary at all the tiger never brushed his teeth hot tea could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all okay so dear students and it uh, like uh, here he saying he uh, when those people uh, the sellers okay bread sellers used to come okay uh, you know along with uh, the uh, you know bangles uh, 
you know, like the children were very much interested to see, okay. Therefore, uh, you know, before they could brush their teeth, they could come out in the open and they were interested to have a look what kind of bangles, you know, what kind of stuff uh, did the bread seller, okay, or the baker uh, has brought, okay. So, uh, this is something what uh, is about the uh, very popular uh, food, okay, food of Goa that has been described in this uh, part, okay. So, see here it is written, these bakers are even today known as spader in Goa, okay. These bakers even today are known as spader in Goa, okay. So, uh, and then writer is saying, see, during our childhood in Goa, the baker used to be our friend, companion and guidance, okay. During our childhood in Goa, the baker used to be our friend, companion and guide. The friend, the baker used to be the friend, companion and guide. He used to come at least twice a day. Uh, once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket. Okay. The jingling thought of his bamboo woke us up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet him. Why was it so? Was it for the love of the loaf? Not at all. The loaves were bought by some Paskine or Bastine, the meat servant of the house. What we longed for were those bread, bread bangles, bread bangles, which we chose carefully. Sometimes it was sweet bread or special made. So, bread bangles were something okay that uh, the children were very much interested to have a look and taste that is why they were interested when the baker used to visit their neighborhood they were very much interested about the sweet bread of uh, you know special make mm, okay uh, that is in other words called bread bangles okay uh, which we chose carefully and sometimes it was sweet bread of special make the baker made his musical entry on the scene, uh, this I already explained to you. So this is the first part, okay. Now the second part of the story you see, marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the bowl, okay. So tradition, Guanese tradition has been described here actually, okay. Guanese, uh, Guanese uh, uh, you know, tradition is described here. Now second, he his attention shifts towards uh, the marriage custom, okay, the tradition of marriage. So, what happens uh, during the marriage? Marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the bowl. Just as a party or a feast loses its charm without bread, marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as bowl. Just as a party or a feast loses its charm without bread, okay. So, uh, Bread was an integral part of the Guanese uh, culture. The bread used to be there in every household. And in the marriage, uh, sweet, special kind of sweet bread was very much, uh, you know, popular. That was called ball. Not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village. The lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement. Cakes and uh, bolinhas. Uh, are a must for Christmas, Christmas as well as other festivals. Thus, the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential. Presence of the baker's furnace in the village is essential because you know, such cakes and all these, okay, uh, made of bread and all these, okay, uh, was very much important during the occasion of marriage. That, that is why there must be a, uh, the, the presence of a baker's furnace in the village where the uh, ceremony is taking place. Okay, The baker or bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as the kabai. kabai okay? It was a single piece long frock reaching down to the knees. In our childhood we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants. Even today, anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees um, invites the comment that he is dressed like a pader, okay, uh, like a pader. The baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall in pencil, see, uh, so some wall. 
uh, if to be recorded uh, on some wall in pencil. Baking was indeed a profitable profession in the old days. Baking was a professional, a very profitable profession in those days. The baker and his family never starved, okay, because it was in heavy demand. Heavy uh, people used to, you know, uh, uh, ask for this particular stuff uh, on an everyday basis. Therefore, if someone took to the selling the bread and all, okay, then uh, he's. Uh, uh, he would be uh, uh, financially independent. The baker and his family never starved. He, his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous. Their plum physic was an open testimony to this. Plum physic means uh, fat body, okay? Fl uh, plum physic means uh, fat body, okay? Plum physics means, uh, you know, mm, fat body, okay? Um, even today, any person with a jackfruit-like physical appearance is easily compared to a baker. Okay, they were very healthy actually. Okay, so dear students, so that's all about uh, the bakers of Goa. Okay, uh, we, we could see that uh, bread, uh, you know, uh, bread uh, plays a very important role in the Guanese household even today and it has been handed down to the present generation of Guanese people by the Portuguese who popularized, brought this uh, type of uh, you know, food as well as popularized it as a result of which it is still carried on to the present generation okay and it's a very popular uh, sort of a um, food okay uh, and uh, like uh, it's still there some of the furnaces of the Portuguese okay are still there where the you know, fire is still burning and you know it's a very good profession uh, in the sense that it, it has got a huge demand uh, as a result of which you know uh, Baker's family do not starve okay and you might have uh, you will also come to me about what things are important uh, during the marriage uh, occasions okay a special sweet bread is important which is called bowl okay bowl and not only in marriages but also in a party or a feast okay uh, you know everywhere bread is very important and especially in marriage it was sweet bread which was called as the uh, which was known as the ball actually which was very very important okay and uh, now also if the same tradition goes on extend extended up uh, in you know in the Guanese society so marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the bowl. Children used to uh, rush out from their house on hearing the um, third of the bell. Okay, why? Because uh, because they were interested to see what kind of uh, design was made by the bread. It, it was a bread bangle or some other pastry or what kind of design that the you know a baker has uh, brought with him on that particular day to have a look and to taste the children used to come out of their house they are very excited okay to have a look so um, that's all about uh, the Guanese uh, uh, way of eating uh, okay and uh, we came to know something about their um, festivals also so now let's move on to the um, second part of the story uh, which is uh, which is Kurg actually okay it is uh, about Kurg okay so let's f find out dear students uh, what is um, uh, Kurg all about all about Kurg is coffee country famous for its rainforest and spices rainforests and spices okay Kurg is a place where coffee is grown and it is famous for its rainforest and species uh, sorry spices a lot of different kinds of spices are also produced there in Kur. let's find out where it is midway between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore sits a piece of heaven uh, uh, sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of god it's such a wonderful beautiful place okay in the state of karnataka uh, that you know the, the writer says that it is something like it's a piece of heaven it is kingdom of God it's got such a beautiful landscape okay if you happen to get an opportunity you can even visit there or in future if you are studying in uh, Karnataka uh, you can also visit that particular place it's a beautiful place uh, you know 
uh, it is that is why the uh, writer refers to as, as uh, referred to it as kingdom of God. This land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial man, beautiful women, and wild creatures. Okay, so uh, Kurg or Kodagu, the smallest district of Karnataka, it is the smallest district of Karnataka, is home to evergreen rainforests, spices, and coffee plantation. Spices and coffee plantation, okay. Uh, is something what is held there. Evergreen rainforests cover 30% of this district. During the monsoons, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. It just keeps raining and raining and raining during the monsoons. So hardly any visitors uh, uh, go there during the monsoon uh, period. The season of joy commences from September and continues till March. Okay. So see the season of uh, the tourist visit has already started. Okay, it, it starts from September till March it continues. The weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measure. The air breathes, no, the air breathes of invigorating coffee. The air breathes of invigorating coffee means you shall get the smell of coffee even in the air. Okay. Uh, coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under the under tree canopies. Coffee estates and colonial um, bungalows stand tucked under tree canopies in prime corners. Okay, it means that uh, among the you know you can find uh, some colonial bungalow bungalows because it was also uh, you know. Um, you might be you know in the entire India was ruled by British, Portuguese, French, you know, like as I told you, Pondicherry was ruled by the French and uh, Goa was ruled by the Portuguese. Likewise, this particular uh, place of India, uh, Kuru, was also ruled by a kind of a martial sort of a warrior type of people, okay. So their bungalow is still there, colonial, colonial bungalows, coffee estates and Colonial bungalow stand tucked under the canopies in prime corners. Canopies means here canopies uh, of the roof like coverings that form shelters. Okay, roof like covering the so canopies in prime corners stand tucked under the canopies. Okay, coffee estates and uh, colonial bungalows stand tucked under tree con canopies. Okay, lot of big big trees are there. Okay, uh, so and, and under the shade of the tree. You know, in and around there is a lot of uh, greenery, so you can find coffee estates as well as colonial bungalows, okay, under the canopy of trees. Next, the fiercely independent people of Kurg are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent, okay. The fiercely independent people of Kurg are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent. So, they might be um, from uh, Greece or Arab countries, okay. They are the descents of those uh, those countries, okay. As one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when a return became impractical, okay. So it is said that Alexander's army, uh, you know, was moving um, south along the coast and settled in 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 a place called. Kur, okay, where their return was impossible or impractical. These people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in, in the martial traditions, marriage and religious rites, which are distinct from the Hindu mainstream, okay. Mm, it is different, quite different. Uh, these tribal people, their uh, way of living, their marriage custom and all, everything is different from the uh, Hindu mainstream, okay. Mainstream means, uh, means Hindu uh, most of the Hindu uh, people, okay. Uh, the theory of Arab origin draws support from the long black coat uh, with an embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodabos. Known as Kupia, it resembles the Kupia worn by the Arabs and the Kurds, okay. So, as they are the descendants of uh, some say Greeks or the Arabs, therefore they have carried their culture, okay. So, they have their uh, different types of, you know, um, costumes you can see here, okay, T traditional Kurgi dress, okay. So, embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodabus, 
uh, known as kupia it resembles the kupia worn by the arabs and the kurds okay it's called kupia actually okay next kurdi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers okay they are very much uh, you know brave uh, you know the tribes and they are also warrior tribes okay warrior class actually so there's a lot of story regarding their valor or courage okay uh, the kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the indian army and the first chief of the indian army general uh, kariyappa was a kurgi okay first chief of the indian army was also from uh, kurgi he even uh, was also a kurgi means he was from kurg even now uh, kodabus are the only people in india permitted to carry firearms without a license okay they are the only tribe okay uh, tribes who are allowed to carry firearms without a license without a license they can carry the firearms the river godavari obtains its wa uh, water from the hills and forest of kurg uh, mahasi a large freshwater fish abound in these waters okay kingfishers dive for their catch while squirrels and langurs drop partially eaten uh, fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect in the clear water elephants enjoy being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mahouts the most laid back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting canoeing rappelling rock climbing and mountain because these things are available in in that place okay Uh, uh the most laid back in the laid back means the most uh, and laid back means those who are not very active as human beings okay like those people who are not very much uh, active lazy kind of people laid back the most laid back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure okay they take to this high adventure uh, high energy adventure profession uh, you know like river rafting canoeing rappelling rock climbing and mountain biking numerous walking trails in this region are a favorite with trekkers numerous walking um, a lot of uh, a walking trails are also there okay uh, walking trails means uh, you can see paths created by walking are favorite with trekkers okay uh, people go for trekking trekking also these are some of the uh, you know uh, activities you can resort to there like river rafting is there canoeing is there rappelling rock climbing is there okay next you see birds bees and butterflies are there to give you company macaws malabar squirrels langurs and slender lorries keep a watchful eye on the tree canopy okay from uh, from up above the tree they watch these birds i do however prefer to step aside for wild ele elephants the climb to the uh, brahmagiri hills brings you into a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of kuru a walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of uh, nisar gadama running into buddhist monk from india's largest tibetan settlement at nearby uh, by lakpu is a bonus the monks in red ochre and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of india right here in kul okay the monks in red ochre uh, and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of india right here in kurg so you should you, you, you can also get a lot of uh, people okay uh, monks and all are also there uh, and uh, it's a beautiful place in terms of its landscape so those who are interested for river rafting Uh, you can say canoeing and all these activities water activities and trekking activities okay they can go there okay it's a beautiful place and more than anything else mm, uh, it is uh, you know its panoramic view is very good its landscapes are beautiful so even if you uh, want to have a you know change in the mind and to enjoy the beautiful landscape you can go there okay so that's all about uh, kurg okay it's a beautiful place in uh, uh, karnataka see how it's given here how to reach so madikeri the district headquarters is the only gateway to kurg the misty hills 
lush forest and coffee plantations will cast a spell on you okay so um, coffee plantation is something which is very very attractive there okay lush forest means very dense forest you will find misty hills okay these are some of the attractions of that place find a resort coffee estate or stay in a home for a truly kurgi uh, experience you can stay in the local homes also okay they give rent actually like hotel so you can stay there to get the uh, local feel by air the nearest airports are mangalore 135 km and bangalore 260 km okay so mangalore from mangalore it's 135 km from bangalore is 260 km there are flights to mangalore from mumbai and to bangalore from ahmedabad chennai delhi and goa hyderabad kochi kolkata mumbai and pune so uh you can go from mumbai to mangalore or you can go by train till uh mangalore or by or up to Bal uh, bangalore and then you can visit that place by rail the nearest rail the heads are at mysore uh, you can go to mysore nearest is mysore mangalore and hassan by road there are two roads to kuru from bangalore both are almost the same distance around 250 to 260 km the road via mysore is the most frequented one okay the other road via uh, tunnel and all this okay so that's about the kuru actually okay that's about kuru and we are left with just one that is t from assam okay t from assam e we are left with so we shall uh, do it in the next class dear students because uh, you know uh, next class after i finish this i shall also discuss some of the exercise questions here okay so uh, i shall leave this part t from assam for the next day okay so uh, have you um, have you done the participle work that i have given you uh, present participle work uh, you know i have given you some tasks na present participle did you do, do that present participle task uh, you need to do it present participle task okay uh, see i tell you very much see uh here dear students so uh, as you can see here um, as you can see here uh, you've got to um, go to this particular file okay um, see whenever you click on a link that will take you to this home page of home page of my library and then you keep checking the boxes you see this is not checked so i don't have to go there this is not checked not i don't have to go there but this is checked it means this is the a uh, file which i am supposed to open okay uh, so whenever you click on a link for the library it will bring you to this page and after that you check out for the box so wh whichever box will be checked is the uh, place where you are supposed to uh, open the link okay so see i have already opened and this is the um, exercise for your um, for your uh, from this lesson okay Uh, identify whether the following sentences are gerund present participle past participle or perfect participle so you've got to write it in this manner okay i have already 
uh, you know, given the task uh, to some of the students, might be not uh, for your class. So please do this, okay? At least 10 you do, 1 to 10 you do, do okay? 1 to 10, okay? First 10 you do, and after you do this, you know, uh, what you need to do, I tell you. Uh, after you uh, do this, uh, you go to the library section, and then you see, you've got to go to the, um, you've got to go to, this is grammar now, okay. You've got to go here on the home page of the library uh, section. You've got to go to the home page. Okay, you see this is the home page and then you go to homework. See here, this is the homework page. There you have to go. After you go to the homework section, see here you have class 10 folder. So click on the class 10 folder. And see, Lakshman has already made, Lakshman has made a folder in his name and uh, Niraj has made, Rupam has made, okay. So likewise, you have to make the folder. Suppose for example, how to make a folder, let me show you. See here, you will click on the new folder like this and then you write for example, uh, Sahil. So I will write Sahil Muhammad here, okay, or just Sahil M, okay. So see i have already made in his name so you make a folder in your name dear students you fold make a folder in your name and inside that folder like lakshman has already submitted something you see so lakshman has submitted many things here so likewise you have to also uh, you have to also make a folder in your name and inside this folder uh, you click on the folder and then you click on the file option here see it is a file so you, you click on the file and you upload it, okay? But make sure that before you upload it, make it PDF, okay? Uh, from Microsoft Lancer. So I shall give you a task today. Uh, I shall send you a link also of the task. You please do it, okay? Like for example, I have already made it here. I show you, dear students, before you wind up, let, my, let me uh, show you. Homework, I've gone to homework, then I'll go to class nine. Mm, and then you see I have written something here worksheet on non finites okay so I shall give you the link of this particular folder okay and it will take you just keep ch keep checking this box uh, you know checking this box so box will take you uh, take you here so this particular box will be checked so you've got to click on it actually it's a PDF file you've got to click on it okay so once you click on this in the student see uh, you shall have the worksheet with you. So you do this worksheet please, okay? See, write down these questions along with answers on your English grammar notebook, okay? If you do not have English grammar notebook, then you write in the English notebook also, okay? Like for example, you have to write like this. I love to eat pizza. Finite verb is love and non-finite verb is uh, to eat. So after every question, you write answer like this, okay? Like after A, you leave space and write this answer. Again, after B, you leave, leave space and write this answer after C like after every question you write the answer in this manner that is why I have given you an example and here also the way I have given you example in the same way you have got to write the answer on your English notebook go to Microsoft Lens app click the pics of your English notebook and convert these images into a single PDF file make a folder in your name inside your class folder upload uh, the PDF by clicking on the link provided on your class WhatsApp group okay so I will send you today. Make a folder in your name inside your class folder. Inside your class folder where? Your class folder is situated uh, in the library section in, inside the homework folder. Inside the homework folder you shall find your uh, class folder like you see. Uh, like you see homework. Okay. After, inside the homework folder you have class 9, class 10, class 11, class 12. So you have got to go to the homework folder first. See and then your class will be listed here. So inside this folder, you make your name folder, okay? See here, your name, uh, your name, the Rupam and all have made already, okay? They have name, mail. So all of you make an individual folder so that I can understand, I can, uh, you know, look out uh, for all this and I can also grade you, whatever work you are doing accordingly, I can grade you also, okay? You understood? So, Mm, 
so i shall send you the link dear students today and you please uh, work it out okay and also upload uh, on the link the link for uh, link for the worksheet uh, as well as the link for the submission of the uh, work okay but do follow the instructions given in the question okay and uh, uh, I am checking your answer scripts, okay? Uh, but literature part, especially two mark literature part, most of you haven't done well. Some of you, of course, done uh, have done very well, but most of you couldn't write according to my expectations. So you've got to work towards improving your literature uh, answers, actually, okay? Literature answers you've got to write to the point, and uh, you know it, it should be specific, actually. But um, uh, most of you could not write to the point. Therefore, I have deducted your marks here and there okay so um, i shall show you the answer scripts i am checking the answer scripts so i shall uh, post your answer scripts uh, both on my website as well as on google classroom okay on both the platforms i shall post your answer script uh, you know today i will I, I shall post 10 so you can check out on my website okay inside your uh, you know see inside your see homework homework folder and then you will find class 10 folder inside which you will find answer sheet um, of online test ok so dear students please check this um, homework folder class inside class homework folder there will be class 10 folder inside class 10 folder answer sheet of online test ok so I shall be posting um, today hopefully I will try to post 20 but uh, let's see I have just started checking so uh, hopefully I shall be able at least 15 papers I shall be able to post today so you check please by 3 o'clock in the uh, afternoon by 3 o'clock in the afternoon you check uh, you shall be able to see at least 15 uh, papers uh, you know uploaded uh, on that particular folder so you please do check out on that okay so thank you dear students bye bye take care and please do submit my homework also whatever i gave you present participle okay so bye bye take care uh, have a nice day